Hi guys, welcome back to Says the Vet. I am Says. We're here to talk today about resuscitation of the newborn calf, lamb, goat. So it's actually a follow on video. If you've just come over from the how and when to help in a calving or lambing, then welcome. Stick around, I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, welcome back to Says the Vet. Before I dive straight in, please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the emblem down the bottom of the screen. Thumbs up if it's useful for you, comment, ask questions, make requests over on the YouTube channel so that I can see them and respond. So we're gonna pick up from Bub has just been born and he's lying there. Now first thing you're gonna do is try and clear his mouth and nose for him so he can breathe. Get your fingers in there and scoop out the mucus. Get a long piece of straw or strong grass and you can actually use that to scoop up inside the nostrils. The tickling on the inside of the nostrils up high actually stimulates the central nervous system as well, so it helps wake them up and get them breathing. So it stimulates that breathing reflex. Something that you may see on Dr. Google or in older practices is to hang the animal up by the back legs and even swing them to clear the mucus from the nose and the throat. Now I personally recommend against this. It does collapse the organs from the abdominal organs down onto the lungs and actually makes it more difficult for them to take a breath and any fluid that comes out of the mouth or the nose, we now know is just fluid coming from the stomach. So instead, what we're gonna do is put them into what I call the ruminant recovery position. Upright on their chest, allow their little lungs to inflate fully. If we've got them lying on one side or the other, one of those lungs is gonna be compressed, okay? So upright, and then you're gonna pull those little back feet right up as close to the head as possible to drop the pelvis down and let those abdominal organs fall back off the lungs. So we're just trying to make it as easy as possible for them to draw a big breath. Lots of stimulation, so have your towels handy, lots of vigorous rubbing. Sometimes you can put some, some cold water over the face as well and that will kind of give them a, a little shock to wake up. Now if they've got a good strong rhythmic heartbeat and that's in behind the front legs under the elbows, so if you feel under the elbows, good strong rhythmic heartbeat, then they just need to get breathing. They should have a normal rhythmic breathing in the first 20 to 30 seconds of coming out, okay? So you wanna rub their chest firmly to stimulate them, tickle up the nose with the straw, with the long piece of grass. You can even put a bit of cold water over their head. This can help to wake them up. If this fails, then in lieu of using drugs, you could try giving them a breath. Occasionally, a breath into the lungs can kickstart things. So if you wanna give this a shot, what you're gonna do is you need to stretch out the neck Gently hold off the trachea, the windpipe, so just apply a little bit of pressure around the neck there to seal off the esophagus, which is where the food goes down. So we're trying to hold off that esophagus and just, just hold the windpipe in our fingers. Otherwise, when you give a breath, you're just blowing air down into the stomach. Close the mouth, cover one nostril, and give a breath into the other. If this is a lamb or a goat kid, they've got tiny little lungs, so it's a very little breath. You don't want to overinflate them. You're just trying to start that breathing reflex. Now this obviously needs to come with a warning around health and safety here. If you're going mouth to nose with a little animal, we do have infectious diseases that can cause premature labor and abortions in animals, for example, that can infect humans as well. So as a vet, I have a breathing mask and bag, but in unprepared circumstances in the past, I have occasionally popped a sterile glove over the muzzle to protect myself, popped a hole through one nostril and given a mouth to nose resuscitation. Now as a vet, I also carry a mucus uh, bobble <laughs> thing, I'm showing my professionalism here. I don't know what they're called, you know the, use the, it's a human baby thing, it sucks snot out of their nose, right? So we use it to suck the, suck the uh, mucus out of their nose there for the little animals. If he is breathing, even if it's not beautifully rhythmic yet, you don't need to give a breath down the nose. This is just a breath to inflate those lungs to kickstart the reflex. Lungs not inflating well is high risk if we have performed a caesarean, for example, just because a vaginal birth compresses the lungs on their way out, so there's less fluid in there on arrival, while a caesar is very much a sudden welcome to the world and they're more likely to have some amniotic fluid down in the lungs there still. So hopefully from here he's awake and breathing rhythmically. So now we need to turn to making sure they get a good drink of colostrum in the first few hours. Check on him 10 minutes after birth and make sure he has a strong suck reflex by putting your fingers in his mouth and pushing on the roof of the mouth. If he's got a poor suck reflex, he's going to need to be tubed with colostrum. If there's a poor suck reflex, then it's possible that he's weak and stressed from a difficult birth. It could be that the brain has actually taken a bit of a hit from oxygen deprivation, again, if the birth was lengthy and difficult. 
he could in fact be a little bit premature and have poorly developed reflexes or he could have a congenital disease that he's actually been born with that affects the brain. But my point is, if the suck reflex is weak or non-existent, be aware that he's going to be higher risk of issues going forward. Hopefully he just needs time, but we do need to go ahead and tube him with a big belly full of colostrum so he doesn't just go backwards from not having any colostrum. Ideally, as a rule, we want to get a belly full of colostrum ideally in the first four hours, but at least in the first eight hours. After eight hours, the gut starts what we call shutting down, and they, it just means that he's not able to absorb the antibodies. He's not able to absorb the immune cells very well from that colostrum, because that's what colostrum is all about, right? We want to get the colostrum in so that they inherit that immune system straight from mum. That's what colostrum is. But we need to get it in quickly. So after eight hours, the gut starts shutting down. They won't be able to absorb it as well. At 12 hours, the amount absorbed is, is pretty minimal. At 24 hours, it's zilch. Now that doesn't mean that we don't continue to feed colostrum for the first two to three days. It is very condensed fat and protein, so nutritionally they should still be on it, but in terms of immune system, the benefits are going to be gone after 24 hours of life. And he needs that colostrum to get his immune system from mum. So no colostrum equals no immunity, and he will go downhill quickly with a simple bacterial infection from the environment. So for calves, if you can get two litres in that first drink of colostrum, that's gonna be gold. For little lambs or kids, there's a lot more variation in the size that they're born, anywhere from one to six kg really. So we're aiming for 10% of their body weight in the first 10 hours. That's the golden rule, 10% in 10 hours. So for a three kg lamb, for example, that's gonna be 300 mil, but not all in one massive feed, that's across the first 10 hours. So even if all you do is get 80 mil into that little belly straight off the bat and then leave it with mum, hopefully she'll take over from there. You can either milk mum to get the colostrum or you can buy powdered colostrum. There's a lot of variation in quality and concentrations between breeds and also between commercial powdered products. So check at your local vet clinic for the best one they can offer you. What we're looking for for quality is a really good high IgG content. Now that's the concentration of immune system antibodies. Now a couple of notes of caution. With sheep as a species, it is easy to break the bonding process between mum and bub by intervening at those crucial times of labour. So if she gets a sudden surge of adrenaline because you, a predator, as far as she's concerned, has interfered with her baby or with her at the crucial time where she wants to be licking it clean, eating the placenta and bonding with it, then those high surges of oxytocin, the bonding hormone, can be shut off and she can give up and essentially completely reject that lamb. It's all about the stress, the adrenaline. So if she's a pet sheep, she may well be absolutely fine. She could have a full-on caesarean, meet and greet and love on those little lambs while you're sitting right there with her meeting them at the same time and not be phased. But if she's not a pet, then just the act of handling the lamb briefly to check on it can break that process altogether. And now, congratulations, you've got a lamb with a mother that's rejected it and you're gonna to have to bottle raise it inside. So approach with caution. Try and analyze what's going on from a distance before jumping straight in when it comes to sheep, okay? But do not leave it too long either. So it's a bit of a balancing act. We go with a one, two, three rule. Baby should be standing within an hour, have found the teat and had a feed within the first two hours, and passed meconium, that first stool, within the first three hours. If it hasn't even stood within the first two hours, now the clock is ticking. At that point, you need to get out there, pick it up, see what's going on, or you will lose it to hypothermia starvation syndrome. Jump over to check out my other video on that. Um, if it's not up yet, it will be very soon. Now, if you think that that 12 hour window has already passed for colostrum intake when you find him in the paddock, then he will be immunocompromised and likely need antibiotics. If you have a small ruminant enthusiast vet in your area, they may be able to offer you a plasma transfusion as well. And this is where they take blood from mama, they harvest the immune cells from it and they inject it straight into the lamb or the kid's bloodstream. Um, so an instant immune system straight into their bloodstream. Sounds a lot more complicated than it is. It's actually pretty simple in your ruminants. Um, a little bit more tricky in your camelids and your alpaca. Whew, right. I got into quite a bit more detail there than I intended. So many side notes. 
I'm cutting myself off. We're gonna leave it there for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking the emblem down below. I would love to hear your experiences and success stories on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook page. Please go ahead and thumbs up if it was helpful for you and comment away. Thanks guys, I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.